Hello everyone. I'm going to demonstrate how to mix plaster uh, for carving for the assignment. Um, so the tools that you will need for this your bucket, stir stick, your small sponge from your pottery kit, your glasses, uh, it's a good habit to um, get comfortable wearing these, even though things may fog up when breathing the mask, uh, but it will protect your eyes from splashes and things like that. Plaster is non-toxic, um, but with the particulates, if they get stuck in your eye, it can be abrasive, right? So you want to avoid getting splashed in the face. Um, your small one inch chip brush. Um, you'll grab one of these bins, which is set over here against the wall. Right, so grab one of those small bins. The white ones or the black ones will work just fine. And we'll need some Murphy's oil soap. So if people don't know what this is or have used this, it's just a floor cleaner. Um, use it for mold release. So in using plaster, um, it's like cooking with oil, cooking with butter. You get a thin layer on that frying pan and that will um, you know, make the food not stick to the frying pan, right? So we don't want our plaster sticking to our bin. It makes it easier to come out because there are these little ridges that are right here that the plaster can hold on to. When we pour the plaster uh, in here, it'll be liquid, and so it just flows into every little nook and cranny that there is available. So that's what we need. I've set out the Murphy's oil soap on the tables for you guys to use. Right? We got two on this table. We have two on the opposite table over there, okay? So uh, a couple of things, I'm going to take you over to the sink and talk about cleaning, prepping, and what needs to be done. Follow me. So we have several or a couple of uh, garbage cans around. There's this one by the sink. Um, there's one over there by the shelves and then one in the back over there, which I may move to make it more accessible. But we have several places for garbages for you guys to throw things out. Um, the sinks. We cannot let any liquid plaster go down into the sink uh, because as it solidifies like concrete does, you know, it hardens, it has the possibility of clogging pipes. So that's why we have uh, water buckets in the sinks for rinsing, things like that. So we'll change out the water, we'll throw away the sediment that collects at the bottom of these buckets here. Um, so I have, this is typically the rinse station, okay? Um, because of social distancing, we want to make sure that there are, that there's enough room for people to clean without being crowded. So there's one bucket here that people can use. And then I have a couple other buckets for cleaning spaced out over here. So you can see them with the garbage bags, All right? So cleaning station cleaning station, cleaning station here. We also have 
um, buckets with uh, the molding plaster in them that are filled up. Okay, so uh, again, being aware of social distancing, you want to be careful of that. Um, bucket there, a bucket under there. Um, this is the large bin that I typically use with students, um, but you know, we'll uh, spread the love, right? So, want to make sure everyone has enough plaster to work with. And the last plaster um, container there. The bags of plaster, um, in case we run out and need to refill. If anybody grabs a bag when I'm not around, we have bags down here. You can clearly see it labeled as number one molding plaster. And we also have our plaster cabinet in here that is chock full of fresh plaster. So this is not to be confused with the uh, plaster that Christopher and the glass classes use, right? So we're not going to be using this K60 plaster. It has a different texture to it. Uh, it's meant for another purpose, for casting, um, and it's a little bit harder to carve, right? So that industrial plaster is over here on the bottom. It's clearly labeled industrial plaster. It's for glass. We do not use it for sculpture. And then this is these are bags of silica. We do not use these or the white bags that are labeled grog, right? So I'll usually be around or the technicians, uh, Anissa and Spencer to refill the plaster buckets. So just let me know and we can refill those. But you know, if someone felt the need to take it upon themselves to refill a bucket, they can do so, right? So coming back, to the sinks, what I want uh, you guys to do is measure out some water. So with this bin, you can see there are a couple lines. It might not be as clear in the video here, um, but when you get to the bin, the reason why I like these so much is that you can pre-measure um, the water to a specific line and then uh, we'll take that water and pour it into our bucket. So using this bin. You can place the bin uh, anywhere you know, that's level. It was just slightly off level on the bucket, so I'm just making sure that it's level here when I fill up. So I'm just measuring to the first line, maybe a little bit beyond. You want to make sure you have enough water so you have enough uh, plaster to carve by the end of it. So from here, We'll take our water and we'll dump it into our mixing bucket, right? So you can see where the level of that water is. Um, the measurement, the term of measuring uh, this is uh, a technique called water displacement. Um, so uh, we measure out the water. Uh, in the form that we're going to pour and then you know we'll add the plaster and mix it so from here we're going to come back grab our bucket grab a paper towel all right and then come back over to our area.
adjust the camera just a little bit. So, <clears throat> I really like this fisheye lens. Um, it gives the ability to uh, see what's going on in all sorts of directions. So, to oust myself, I'm doing a bad thing and wearing sandals. So, it probably showed up in the fisheye lens. So, um, shame on me. I shouldn't be doing that, but for this demo, we'll get by, okay? Uh, with your towel, what we want to do is just clean out the bin and just scrub down the sides a little bit. There could be little bits of plaster remnants in there. Um, as we use this stuff over time, plaster builds up. You can see it more clearly on the black bins here. Um, just want to keep these around for a while, you know, uh, so you don't have to keep on purchasing them. Uh, so just wipe it out with the paper towel that you have, and we will begin prepping everything. Okay. So, first step. We're going to take our Murphy's oil soap. And with your brush, just lightly dab it in the Murphy's. Um, if anyone's ever never, never used Murphy's, it's kind of like pine saw, right? Uh, so take your brush and then wipe it all along the sides make sure it gets all over right so plaster is uh, one of the characteristics of plaster is that it takes on uh, anything that is on the surface, like any texture or anything like that. So if, you know, it's not a huge deal if you don't, if you forget to wipe this down, um, but there are some streaks that are left by the Murphy's oil soap here and it will leave a texture um, so if you're pouring plaster to get a clean um, surface, uh, we would want to wipe this down. So just a little bit of, you know, water, take your small sponge, wring it out real quick in your water that you have here, and then you can lightly wipe clean the surface here. So since you just put your sponge in the bin here and have Murphy's oil soap don't put it back. Don't rinse it out in the water that you just gathered. That's what we're going to be using for mixing. And the soap will just be kind of a pain. When mixing the plaster, it may take a, you know, it may not set correctly. It could crack, um, that sort of thing. So the bin is properly wiped down. Okay. From here, we're going to start mixing our plaster. Um, now you might be asking yourself, what are these lovely little uh, things? Um, they're ventilation for plaster mixing, um, so it'll 
suck up all the particulates in the air and uh, make sure that we are not breathing the uh, dust, right? We're not having anything go in our lungs that could cause us harm um, for future use. Now, like, uh, I do have to say, like, in industry, people being around uh, plaster, being around silica, particulates in the air, breathing those, it can be a really harmful thing over years and years and years working in this type of environment. We have a very low risk of, um, you know, inhaling a, an amount of silica, plaster dust, air particulates that would cause us real harm, right? But it's something that we do want to prevent. So when mixing, we want these uh, on all the time. So where those are, the uh, switch is right here. So we'll press start. That'll start that up. Um, our lights are right back here as well, right? So if the lights are off, click it on, click on our ventilation, and we can start getting mixing. So hopefully you guys can hear me well. Um, so this molding plaster bin here is the one that I'm going to use. Uh, it's a large one, it's on wheels. It will be right under here, under this shelving. Alright, so take it out to where you need it. Another uh, positive of why I moved um, molding plaster into these buckets is that these can also be moved around too. So with being careful with social distancing, um, if we could keep four people in this area at a time, so one on each station, if you need to mix uh, by your area, that's fine, right? Um, just make sure that these uh, are on at all times. Um, I think there's one lab slot that could be totally filled with seven people, right? So um, either take turns using the area here or uh, use your uh, area um, that you've been assigned, okay? So, there's a couple different ways to mix plaster. Um, you can mix by volume, you know, by weight. So if I have like one pound of water, it takes such and such percentage of plaster to, uh, you know, mix, right? Uh, I do it by look and feel for what we're doing. It's totally okay. Um, the other methods of, like, measuring plaster for a little bit more precision uh, in, can be used in ceramic uh, slip casting like industrial processes of making multiples um, and uh, glass casting because uh, you want those percentages to be precise for holding up to firing temperatures. But we're going to be carving so we don't have to do that. Each bag should have uh, a container like this for scooping uh, and what I want to do is scoop and make sure you know I have my ventilation over my bucket because it as I pour you'll see particulates go into the air and 
if my ventilation is over the bucket, I'll just get sucked up, right? So the less agitation that you pour with, the better. It'll keep particulates down. You won't have them in the air. If you're noticing, I'm just lightly shaking the plaster right into the center of the bucket here. Um, and what I'm looking for is what's called uh, an island. So as the water becomes more saturated with plaster, it will begin to form a little island in the center of the water and, um, you know, it's absorbing the water. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. And as I get closer, you can see how it's just starting to form that island, right? Through osmosis, the plaster is absorbing that water. So it's just kind of falling away. So I'll see if I can get a uh, better action shot of me pouring the plaster in there. Okay, there we go. So aiming for that center, you can see how the plaster gathers, falls away into the water, absorbs the water as it sits. And as that little mound begins to stay on the surface, um, it's a good indication that we have a good ratio of plaster to water. Okay, so for uh, good measure, I like to take a little bit of plaster and shake it around the outside because there's no harm in pouring this plaster on the thick side. Okay, so lightly sprinkling plaster around the side. And it's starting to get milky white. And that nasty looking thing in the center there might be a bug. Nope, it's a piece piece of uh, the bag ripped from the bag. So, not a bug. Don't worry about getting your hands in there and finding bugs. Well, it was not a bug. Great. So there we are uh, with mixing the plaster. Um, since we're done with the dry material mixing, I'm going to turn off the ventilation so you guys can hear me. So the thing with mixing plaster, uh, you want to make sure your water is cold, right? If you uh, begin with hot water, that will... Uh, kickstart the chemical uh, reaction um, that hardens plaster, okay? 
uh, we don't want that, right? Um, so using cold water um, will uh, yeah, mix the plaster uh, correctly. <clears throat> if you know you're, if you have, if you forget a few things like between like the mix the mixing the dumping of the plaster and then you know the pouring of the plaster in your mold here you have a window of about 20 minutes here before mixing before things really settle so once you agitate the plaster and water that's when the chemical process uh, really starts um, if it just sits here for a little while it's fine like I'm talking I'm not worried about this setting up take your time there's no real reason to rush you know in um, mixing the plaster here I noticed I have a little bit of plaster that kind of fell into my mold so I can take my time clean it out wipe it down not a big deal when you are mixing plaster um, once you start stirring, uh, you don't want to add any more plaster. If you can avoid it, like if I start mixing and, add, and need to add more dry plaster because um, there's you know, too much water to plaster in the ratio, um, I'll get clumps of plaster and then you can see those clumps in the sculpture, right? Um, so just a couple things to uh, watch out for, right? So I'm going to begin mixing. So using my stir stick here. So back and forth in a circular motion. You can see how thick the plaster is on bottom. So I want to make sure things become uniform. We're looking for a real thick pancake batter, right? So adding that plaster, sprinkling that plaster around the sides of your island Will help you get a thick plaster so you can see how i drag back and forth that stick in that wake that's what we're looking for a nice thick plaster so done with my stir stick i can set it to the side um right there and for pouring, you know, take your time. And just make sure that you pour at an even rate. So I didn't get too much clumps. Another thing that you can do is scrape down your uh, bucket and then use your hand to scrape out the rest into your uh, bin. So from here, You can lightly tap the sides. Things are still pretty fluid. Oop. <laughs> Took a tumble. This is just as good as doing live, right? You guys get to see all my little uh, Dick Van Dyke moments. Um, so, you can see these bubbles coming to the surface and popping, right? 
Um, it's just to get the bubbles off of the sides. Um, bubbles really aren't an issue for us. Um, I mean, when carving, you may carve into a bubble and it may have a little pit or something like that. Um, but for um, like large uh, industrial pouring molds and things like that, uh, they run plaster through a vacuum, so it it sucks out all that air that's in the plaster because having air bubbles in large industrial molds, um, no good, right? It can cause cracks, things like that. So rinsing, I'm gonna take my bucket over here, take my stir stick. So once we um, plaster starts to mix, the clock is ticking, right? You can already see on my hands uh, the plaster is starting to set up a little bit. Um, you know, it's getting a little bit more chalky. So, what we want to avoid is letting our plaster set up in our bucket before we can clean it. So, with your sponge, you know, wiping off your stir stick. You can take a little bit of water from the bucket. Swish it around. Get all those lovelies out. And then pour the water back into the cleaning bucket. Right? The sediment will float to the bottom, the water will rise to the top and separate naturally. You can wipe out your bucket, let it air dry, or grab a paper towel and wipe it out. Um, but from here, this is clean, right? This is your bucket. I want you guys to take responsibility for it, right? Keep it clean. And then cleaning up uh, the area here, like for instance, there's a little bit of dirt pile that's right there that needs to be swept up. When I was pouring plaster, a little bit fell out. Um, this needs to be wiped up with a sponge. Every once in a while, um, there's a couple of droplets that fall onto the floor. If you can see those guys down there, um, we have those paint scrapers. So if you can take your paint scraper and scrape up the plaster droplets that hit the ground like ooh, that's a good one so if if you like cleaning things this is an oddly satisfying thing like this little guy right here yeah right um so scrape sweep up you know i'm gonna clean this real quick with a uh, large sponge show you where those are we have sponges and things up here if you should need them okay um, so grabbing a large sponge dipping it in the rinse bucket and then coming over here Cleaning up the area. 
right? You can see all that sediment and that got wiped up. And that's clean, right? So with that bin, um, you can carry it over to your area, let it set up. So you can see it's still fluid. Uh, hasn't completely set yet. It'll take a good hour for it to get hard, right? So this is an example of a, a block that has set, okay? Um, so it's a big difference. So in moving these, just be careful not to spill. Grab the sides, carry it over to your space, and let it set up, all right? Thanks for watching. Uh, send any emails that you may have, any questions that you might have, and uh, on to the next demonstration.